Hi, I'm John Solo. Welcome to my humble abode. It's time for another story time episode today, and today we are working on something kind of special to me. Um, these, well, for one, it's fucking Nora Phoenix, and you can't get enough of that here. Let me show you the cover here. Look at that. You got some pink going on. Look at that shit. Um, let me switch back over. Pain us. Hired Hadley. Um, this is in the Foster Brothers series, and this is book two. Um, and we put up book one, I don't know, a month and a half ago, somewhere in there, and, and it seems to be doing really well. Um, everybody seems to like it. They seem to be hit. Book two is another of the four brothers, um, uh, Hadley being his name. And, uh, now I'm not going to, I got a summary. Tracy gives me the summary every fucking time. Look at this. So I can read you that. That way you, you know what it's like without me bullshitting and trying to make up shit. Um, I do it really well, by the way. So USA Today bestselling author, Nora Phoenix. I need something like that for me, by the way, Nora. How did you get that? Can I have some, like a, you know, honorable best-selling narrator, John Sutton. Yeah, anyways. Continues a contemporary gay romance series, The Foster Brothers, with Hadley, who falls for the worst guy possible, his grumpy billionaire boss. <clears throat> I think I can put up with a bit of grump for a billionaire. Sebastian Leclerc is richer than Midas. No, that's not the Midas tire shop, by the way. He's also a grumpy a-hole. She did a little asterisk because she didn't want to swear in the blurb. A playboy and the world's worst boss, at least according to Hadley, who was crazy enough to take the job as Sebastian's PA. That, by the way, is an acronym. We're not very fond of acronyms around here, but I think that one means Pennsylvania. Big mistake. Huge. Sebastian may look like Richard Gere, but he's nowhere near that charming. Everyone cowers and seeks cover when he's in the room. Hadley can't believe Sebastian's really that bad and that there has to be a reason for his bad attitude, but he seems to be the only one. Except Sebastian doesn't seem to appreciate Hadley, calling him his sunshine. He actually, I read that wrong, he does appreciate Hadley. And when something nice comes out of his mouth on occasion, like a cock, Hadley's heart is all a flutter. Oh no, it can't be. Has Hadley fallen for his boss? Hired is the second book in the Foster Brothers series, a contemporary MM romance series about four men who choose to be brothers that can be read as standalones. It has a grumpy billionaire boss, a sunshiny assistant, falling for the boss, hella hot chemistry. Does anybody else use the word hella on a regular basis? Respond in the comments. And a sweet guy who soaks up his praise like a dying plant. So there is the breakdown of the book. I hope you enjoy. Um, there was a prologue prior to the one we just worked on, but uh, this is chapter one, so there's really no spoilers ahead or anything like that. Now, the meet cute is at the end of this chapter, so you got to make it to the end of this story time segment before you see both of them kind of together. It's about the last half of it. Hopefully you get there. Hopefully you enjoy. Have fun, y'all, and we will uh, see you on the next go-around. One. I have a problem. Not the way Hadley wanted to start his way too early Monday morning, with Caitlin sounding so congested and hoarse, Hadley had a hunch in which direction this conversation would go. You. Really? We don't see that very often. Congested and hoarse, Hadley had a hunch in which direction this conversation would go. Oh, I see. Congested and hoarse, Hadley had a hunch in which direction this conversation would go. You mean you sound like a crossover between Bonnie Tyler and a Smurf? Who? Good God, girl, you gotta know your classics. Bonnie Tyler? Total eclipse of the heart? Can not we save the pop culture lesson for another time and focus on me and my problem? She had a point. You're sick, I'm assuming? Yes. In itself annoying, but not that big of a deal. But I started a new job Thursday and I can't call in sick today. Hadley and Caitlin worked for the same agency of as temps. <clears throat> but I started a new job Thursday and I can't call in sick today. Hadley and Caitlin worked for the same agency as temps, both as personal assistants. Why not? All Joyce has to do is listen to you and she'll know you tell the truth. Joyce, the manager of Flex Tex, the company they worked for, was a hard ass. But Hadley didn't find her unreasonable. Worked for was a hard ass, but Hadley didn't find her unreasonable. 
You don't understand. When I took this new job, I signed a contract that I couldn't call in sick or be absent for the first four weeks. Joyce said she could lose the contract otherwise. Hadley frowned. That makes no sense. Why would they lose a contract over someone being sick? I don't know, but I signed for it, and Joyce said I'd get the mother of all bonuses if I made it four weeks. If you made it four weeks? That's rather ominous. She cleared her throat, then burst into a coughing fit that sounded like she was racking up a lung. Hadley held his phone farther from his ear. No need to get all close and personal with that sound. Hadley held his phone farther from his ear. No need to get all close and personal with that sound. Ooh. He's not an easy guy to work for. He being your new boss, I assume? Yeah, he's a bit of a grumpy asshole, but nothing I can't handle. Or you? Or him? What the hell was she, 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 but nothing I can't handle. Or you? Or him? What the hell was she suggesting? Why would I have to handle him? Because I'm begging you to go in my place today and probably tomorrow. Hell no. He wasn't even dressed yet, still enjoying he his the tea spot. Place today and probably tomorrow. Hell no. He wasn't even dressed yet, still enjoying his the tea spot English breakfast tea he had bought over the weekend. A bit of an extravagance at that price, but it was sublime. The aftertaste, full and rich. Hadley, please, if Joyce loses the contract, she'll fire me. You know how she railed at me after the Jones-Davison debacle? And rightly so. You fucked up big time. After breaking up with her girlfriend, Caitlin had been too distracted to pay enough attention to her job at a law firm, causing the client to miss a deadline for filing crucial paperwork that ended up costing them a lot of money. I know... And I never tried to talk my way out of that. But this isn't on me. I'm legit sick. My fever hit 103 degrees this morning, and that was after taking Tylenol. Hadley's stomach sank. I can't just walk in and take over your job. You know Joyce prefers us to arrange for our own subs when we have to miss work, and she won't object to you, seeing as how you're her favorite. Joyce did like him. That much was true. But what about your employer? Would they be okay with it? I'll call them and make sure they know you're coming. I've only worked there for two days, so it's not like I know what I'm doing. The guy is grumpy, but he's not very demanding. The office needs some organizing, so that should be right up your alley. You always love a good makeover project. Fuck, he was about to lose this fight, wasn't he? He'd never been good at saying no, and Caitlin had his number after being friends for five years. I'm not even dressed yet. No worries. He always starts late. If you can make it there by 9.30, you're fine. 9.30? What kind of guy started work at 9.30? He checked the clock. Just after 8. Damn it. Where's the office located? Downtown. I'll text you the address. You're going to have to send me a lot more than that if you want me to do a good job. Like, what do I even have to do? Is there a job description? I'm assuming I need a security badge. Login and password? His panic rose as Caitlin almost choked in another coughing attack. I'll send you everything I have, and no worries. I'll call ahead and get you cleared with security. Thank you, Hadley. Love you. She'd hung up before he could answer, but he could forgive her for that. She barely had a voice left. Well, fuck. This was not how he had envisioned his morning to go. He was working virtually this week and had expected a light caseload with only his three regular customers. Joyce had told him she had another opening in a week or two, which was fine with him. He'd worked long hours the last month while finishing up with his previous client and training the new girl. He could do with a breather. His client and training the new girl. He could do with a breather. Instead, he just screwed himself by taking over Caitlin's client, Caitlin's grumpy asshole client. Oh, he needed to learn how to say no to his friends. He took the world's fastest shower, then got dressed in record time in a pair of dark blue dress pants, a light blue button-down shirt, and a striped tie that was utterly bland, but was guaranteed not to offend anyone. He'd had clients who had gotten upset about his ties before. Apparently, ties could be do... offend anyone. 
He'd had clients who had gotten upset about his ties before. Apparently, ties could be too gay. Who knew? Offend anyone. He'd had clients who had gotten upset about his ties before. Apparently, ties could be too gay. Who knew? He'd never known ties had a sexual identity. Lesson learned. When he checked his phone, Caitlin had texted him the address and confirmed she'd arranged a visitor's badge for him. She'd email him a Word doc in a few minutes with instructions for the job itself. Great. Just great. He had no one to blame but himself, but he'd suck it up and make the best of it. With instructions for the job itself. Great. Just great. He had no one to blame but himself, so he'd suck it up and make the best of it. He downed his tea, wincing at the waste of not being able to take his time enjoying it, considering the price, grabbed a stale bagel. Bagel. Mm. I'm impressed. The waste of not being able to take his time enjoying it, considering the price, grabbed a stale bagel and rushed out the door. Legan had the car, so Adley would have to take the bus. Not that he would have driven anyway. Parking was a bitch downtown, not to mention costly. Plus, their car was unreliable as hell. The last thing he needed was to get car trouble and show up late. Once he was on the bus downtown, he looked up the address Caitlin had texted him. Wait, the office was in the Columbia Tower? He double-checked, but that was the spot that showed on the map. Who was her employer? Oh, man, he'd forgotten to ask the name of the company in all the consternation, and she had never told him. On purpose? Or was that mean of him to think? A quick check of his inbox showed no new emails from Caitlin. If whoever she worked for could afford an office in the most prestigious office building in the city and, coincidentally, also the tallest building in the city, he was running a big company. A Fortune 500 company, possibly. And Hadley was going in blind. Fuck, fuck, fuck. He texted Caitlin. Who is your employer? I need more details. When he'd reached his stop, she hadn't replied yet. He straightened his shoulders and took a deep breath. He'd survive this. He'd been through far, far worse. The benefit of having a childhood that could, with an understatement, be described as hell was that anything after that seemed tame in comparison. The Columbia Tower rose sky high above him, an imposing construction that appeared to consist of three towers from the front when, in fact, it was only one tower in the back. He had no idea what a design like this was called, but it did look impressive. The woman who'd been walking in front of him slowed down. Hadley wanted to pass her, but she made a sidestep. Then another one. Was she... She was wavering. Crap. He rushed forward and grabbed her elbow just in time to catch her when she sagged. Shit, she was heavy. Way heavier than he'd expected. He fisted her jacket with his other hand to prevent her from smacking to the ground. Her eyes were open, but her face was as white as a ghost, and her mouth was moving without words coming out. His eyes fell on the large swell under her jacket. She was pregnant. Very pregnant shit. That explained why she'd been so heavy. I keep on doing the British bean instead of Ben. It. She was pregnant. Very pregnant shit. That explained why she'd been so heavy. She moaned as he managed to lower her to the wet, cold pavement. I'm not feeling well. He sank to his knees next to her. I can see that. What's your name? I'm Hadley. Susanna? Susanna Winters? You know I was on Three's Company? I have huge boobs. Hadley. Susanna? Susanna Winters? Are you in any pain? No. It came out a whisper. Just dizzy. I have low blood pressure and with the pregnancy. How far along are you? Thirty-six weeks. Four more to go. She attempted a smile, but, oh, she was still so pale. Who can I call for you? My husband. He's a... Her eyes rolled away and she fainted, her weight falling toward Hadley. He fell back onto his ass, but he was able to hold on to her, cradling her in his arms. Oh, crap, not good. He couldn't call 911 while holding her with two hands. He needed help. He looked up. A guy dressed in a classic suit and overcoat was hurrying by. Hey! Hadley called out, then again. Hey, I need help. The guy checked around him as if wondering if Hadley was speaking to him, then came over. Did you mean me? Did you see anyone else stopping? She fainted. Stop. You need to... Do you see anyone else? Wondering if Hadley was speaking to him, then came over. Did you mean me? 
Do you see anyone else stopping? She fainted. You need to call 911. The guy took in the woman who lay passed out in Hadley's arms. Is she your wife? I don't know her. She just fainted. Now can you please call 911? She needs medical attention. Right. Of course. The guy pulled out the newest model iPhone and dialed. I need an ambulance at the entrance of the Columbia Tower. A pregnant woman has fainted. I don't know. He looked at Hadley. Do you know anything about her? Her name is Susanna Winters, and she's 36 weeks pregnant. That's all she said before she fainted. She wasn't in pain. The guy relayed the information to the 911 operator. Is she breathing? He then asked Hadley, who nodded. Breathing seems normal, and her heartbeat seems a little slow but steady. Once again, the guy repeated the information. Yes. My name is Sebastian Leclerc. No, there's someone else with her, but he doesn't know her either. Okay. He ended the call. Ambulance is four minutes out. She's getting cold, Hadley said, frowning as he took in the wet, dirty sidewalk. The woman was wearing a fleece jacket, and she was getting soaked. Give me your coat, he told the guy. Sebastian. What? Your coat. Hadley would have gestured, but he was still holding Susanna with both hands. What do you want with it? Jesus, are you going to make me explain everything I'm doing before agreeing? She's getting cold and wet. She needs to stay warm. You're wearing a coat that would do that job. Why is that hard to understand? And the reason your coat doesn't suffice is, I can't take off a coat and hold on to her, man. I'm not fucking Houdini. Sebastian studied him for a moment, his head cocked. Then he unbuttoned his coat and peeled it off. He took out his wallet and a set of keys and put them in the pocket of his suit jacket, which fit him like a glove. Hadley would bet good money Sebastian's suit didn't come off the clearance rack at Target like his own. Wrap it around. Money <clears throat> Sebastian's suit didn't come off the clearance rack at Target like his own. Wrap it around her, Hadley told him, and this time Sebastian didn't argue. Susanna moaned as Sebastian lifted her and wrapped the coat around her, and then her eyes fluttered. Hey, Susanna, Hadley said softly, keeping his voice warm. Remember me, Hadley? You fainted, honey. Oh, panic filled her eyes. Am I okay? The ambulance is on the way. You said to call your husband. Do you have his number for me? My purse. When Sebastian just sat there on his haunches, Hadley threw him at a demonstrative. That's not a word you see every day, demonstrative. Your husband, <clears throat> do you have his number for me? My purse. When Sebastian just sat there on his haunches, Hadley threw him a demonstrative look. He got the hint as he reached for Suzanne's Susanna's. Sebastian just sat there on his haunches. Hadley threw him a demonstrative look. He got the hint as he reached for Susanna's purse. Can I? He asked her. Okay, that was nice of him. She'd pretty much given permission, but to double check was courteous. This is Sebastian. Hadley told her. He's the one who called 911, and that's his coat around you. Her cheeks got some color back. Thank you. I promise I'll have it dry cleaned for you. Sebastian waved dismissively. Don't worry about it. He held up her phone. What's your pin code? She rattled off the numbers, and he punched them in, then tapped a few times and held the phone out to her. He'd put it on speaker, and within seconds, someone picked up. Hey, sweetheart. A male voice said. Miss me already? Rob? Her voice broke. I'm... I collapsed. Outside. They're calling an ambulance for me. And then she started to cry. And her husband called out question after question, sounding terrified. Talk to him. Hadley snapped at Sebastian. Tell him she's fine. Sebastian held out the phone to him. Hadley rolled his eyes at him and said... <clears throat> Sebastian held out the phone to him. Hadley rolled his eyes at him and said, Rob, uh, my name is Hadley, and I'm with your wife right now. She's okay. She fainted, and so we called 911 for one more Sebastian time. Sebastian held out the phone to him. I said him and said, Rob, my name is Hadley, and I'm with your wife right now. She's okay. She fainted, and so we called 911 to have her checked out, but she's not injured. Oh, thank God. Thank you. And the baby? She's fine. 
I can feel her doing the samba. That would be Susanna. Oh, thank God. Thank you. And the baby? She's fine. I can feel her doing the samba, Susanna said with a faint smile. The wail of the ambulance came closer. The ambulance is coming, Rob. Why don't you stay on the line so the paramedics can tell you what's going on? Hadley said. I will. Thank you. Thank you for everything you've done. Oh. Susanna's eyes grew wide and her tummy gurgled, so she had to redo that take. Hadley said. <clears throat> I will. Thank you. Thank you for everything you've done. Oh. Susanna's eyes grew wide as she grabbed her belly with both hands. What is it? Hadley's heart skipped a beat. Was something wrong? My water just broke. Hadley winced. Could amniotic fluid be washed out of an expensive coat? He hoped so. Rob, her water broke, so you may want to get ready for the baby's arrival, he said into the phone, which Sebastian was still holding up. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. It's too early. She can't come yet. Thirty says Sebastian. <clears throat> Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, it's too early. She can't come yet. Thirty-six weeks is fine, Sebastian said, sounding surprisingly calm and confident now. My sister had her daughter at thirty-six weeks, too, and she was fine. My niece was able to go home in a few days. She's six now, and perfectly healthy. Oh, that was sweet of him to share. Maybe he wasn't as much of a dick as Hadley had thought. The ambulance pulled up, and within seconds, the paramedics came rushing toward them, the older one of the two kneeled next to Hadley and Susanna. What's going on, Susanna? Can you tell me what happened? Susanna did a quick recount. And my water just broke. Okay, we'll take you to the hospital then. Which hospital is your OBGYN in? Gray Sloan? Sounds good. We have her husband on the phone. Sebastian handed the other paramedic Susanna's phone. His name is Rob. The paramedic nodded. Rob, we're taking your wife to Gray Sloan. You want to come over? The paramedic <clears throat> nodded. Rob, we're taking your wife to Grace alone. You might want to come over. He listened, then ended the call. He's on his way, Susanna. The paramedics lifted her from the ground onto the gurney, and Susanna reached out for Hadley's hand once she was secured. Stop. Susanna reached for Hadley's hand. He listened, then ended the call. He's on his way, Susanna. The paramedics lifted her from the ground onto the gurney, and Susanna reached for Hadley's hand once she was secured. Thank you so much for your help. You saved my life. He patted her hand. You're welcome. Go have that baby. She turned towards Sebastian. I'm so sorry about your coat. I'll get you a new one if you give me your phone number or email. He waved his hand. Don't worry about it. A coat can be replaced. Your baby is far more important. Maybe Hadley really had misjudged him. And man, he was hot. Messy dark hair that needed a haircut at least three weeks prior, thick eyebrows that were somehow strangely masculine, a nose that could only be described as aristocratic, and a dark beard that framed his full lips. But his eyes stood out most, soft green with hazel spots in it, as if whomever had created them hadn't been able to choose between green or brown. If he'd been certain Sebastian was into men, Hadley would have been happy to exchange numbers and as if whomever had created them hadn't been able to choose between green or brown. If he'd been certain Sebastian was into men, Hadley would have been happy to exchange numbers and arrange for the man to fuck him into a mattress. But, alas. They stood side by side as they watched the paramedics load Susanna into the ambulance and drive off. Once it was out of sight... Hadley sighed and looked down at his wet and muddy pants. Damn it, not the first impression he'd wanted to make on a new client, even if it wasn't technically his client. But he couldn't go home to change. He was already late after his encounter with Susanna. I have to go, he told Sebastian. Thanks for your help. Sebastian gave him a thorough once-over. You said your name was Hadley? Yes, Hadley Foster. Great. You're my new PA.